Hello, my friends. My name is Tobol. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play of RimWorld. We are, in fact, using a brand new mod list this time around. We are using the collection called Immersion Plus. It is in the collections side of the Steam Workshop for RimWorld. It adds, oh, just a handful of mods. No big deal, right? If you are interested in this, go to the workshop under collections. You will find Immersion Plus. There are some specific instructions. You do have to RTFM, read the manual, and figure out how to get this thing working. It is a bit of a beast, but it is going to add a ton, an absolute ton of new options. You're going to see a lot of new stuff. I will try to explain as much as possible. One of the things you're noticing right away is Adaptive Cassie. We have a new storyteller. Adaptive Cassie will try to knock us down, but we'll get up again. She can never keep us down uh, with a slight dose of unpredictability and a sense of pity. We're going to with medium at off the start. I normally would prefer something like rough, but medium should be nice because it'll give us some time to get used to some of the new mods that we're going to be using. All right, let's go ahead and create our lovely world. I'm going to use 70% globe coverage. I've also bumped up the sea level to a little bit towards arid, so we have a little bit more land mass to work with. A uh, random seed, let's go ahead and pick. Oh, really? <laughs> All right, well, so be it. We are going to be on the land of Jockstrap. Wonderful. Okay, so here's our wonderful world of Jockstrap. <laughs> we have a uh, large landmass, only small amounts of water to work with. The first thing you might notice right away is that the factions are kind of grouped together, which to me makes a lot more sense than how they were before where they're spread across the entire planet. The factions would, you know, kind of be centralized and then spread out from there. There is a mod in this pack that does, in fact, let certain factions take over other faction lands. So you'll see that from time to time that someone has captured somewhere else so who are we friends with here we've got the android collective at seven south butium pact a non-technologist coalition of one or four one civil coalition and then the green pheasant brexios or brexos or whatever that is yeah they're all kind of spread all over the place i think anything red is going to be a group that we are super 100 percent hated with yeah we've got the vanquishers the vis uh the viscera of the alliance and the golden land which is an Android Insurrection. Well, lovely. Uh, is that this group over here? The Android Collective. Okay, so this is the group. You have the pirate symbol, the fist, and then the um, the skull. These are the raiding groups. So we'll want to settle somewhere near these other groups because I personally love trading in this game and all the options that, you know, all these different factions open up. So hopefully being near a couple of different groups might be fun. This is a very mountainous region right here in the center. By the way, the color of the roads represents what type of road it is. So... This is kind of a major highway uh, that leads throughout the entire world. And then you've got secondary and tertiary roads here and there. Okay, so how about somewhere right near the Sharp Bison Ocean? I like this little stretch of land. It's right in the middle of a bunch of different factions. We're also not terribly far from androids if we want to go that way. Now, I do have a mod that adjusts the terrain. The cool thing is when we pick our site, we can kind of re-roll the map if we don't like it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a bit. Let's just get a spot that looks good. Um, I want to, I'd love to get a spot with mountains and a river, but that's often really kind of hard to get. There is a, let me open the terrain thing. There's small hills here. I don't see the river going through any large terrain. The closest that would be is over here. And we'd have to walk through all these hills in order to get there. And that's okay. We don't really need that per se. Um, I do would love to get a mountainous area. And I think the only mountainous area is going to be a little bit farther to the south. Here we go. Here's a nice junction of a mountainous terrain near... Uh, a river. It's not exactly on the river, but it's very close to the road as well. So we, if we need to send a caravan, we pop on the road and we're on the way. It is uh, a little chilly here, negative four degrees. So down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 88. And I kind of like having the seasons. I like the fact that it's going to get so cold that we can't plan. It does make, uh, add a little bit of a challenge in our gameplay. So we're going to pick this foresty spot right here. There are no caves, thankfully. Thank God I hate caves. We'll also make sure it's set to 300 by 300, which is relatively large. All right, so now we get to create our lovely characters that are going to inhabit this rim world and make us fall in love with them. Um, I am going to use Prepare Carefully because I love Prepare Carefully, especially just letting us make sure we pick, uh, we kind of cover our bases in terms of skills, but I'm going to restrict myself a bit. Let's say we were randomly given 13,500 points when this scenario was rolled up. So how about one restriction is that we, we stay within a couple of thousand points of the point limit. So we're only able to go over by 2,000. Number two, let's make sure we give one negative trait if we're going to pick two positive traits. 
And health, we may or may not leave stuff there. I, I try to avoid health stuff. My theory, instead of a crash landing, is that we were actually chosen to colonize to make a very small colony on this planet. So, you know, some there would be some uh, screening, right? There would be some training in order to make sure we have the best chance of survival. You'll also notice that this looks suspiciously like an android. Yes, in fact, you can... Oops, sorry, didn't mean to add that. You can, in fact, have androids in this version of the game. We have um, an android. We can actually hack uh, different mechanoids that are in the game. We also can uh, build our own androids, which is going to add a whole lot of flavor to the game. I'm going to remove the android now. We're going to start off with three flesh and blood humans, and we might add an android assistant as our fourth member. Okay, so I've renamed a couple folks and cleared out some traits. We have Bairdy, who is 25 years old, Jackson, and Kiff. And you know what? I like to think that along the way, on this long colony voyage from Earth, that Jexy and Kiff formed a very emotionally intimate bond, and they are, in fact, now married. So, Jexy and Kiff, congratulations. You guys are married. You don't have any kids yet, but you're hopeful. You know, you're really, really hopeful. So... Let me go ahead and do some stat adjustment. I'm going to get the basics out of the way. I want to make sure we cover things like intellect, social, medical, crafting, planting, all that kind of standard stuff. So let me get that out of the way. And then we'll add some personality to our, our folks here through the trait system. Okay, so we've got our folks all settled in. I've got the uh, stats picked out. So Beardy, Beardy was a child that lived in caves all his life for the most part when he was a child. He was finally selected as part of a program to go out and settle the wide world. But you know... He was on a ship. He was first using caves, then he was on a ship. So he really loves the open air and being out under an atmosphere, a sky that he can breathe and live in. So he really took a uh, shining to planting. But he's also, of course, very good at keeping things running as well as mining farther into the mountainside. Jackson was an Earth colonist. And while he left Earth, he kind of uh, was raised in the colonist program. And when he was sent off into space, into the colony, he, he really kind of became the uh the colony ships cook he kind of really made the best of of the resources and the mres and everything they had on board so he of course has a great affinity for cooking he also took care of the hydroponics on the ship so he understands how to do planting he's also uh kind of a little bit of an amateur boxer you know he likes to to keep it nice and spry uh keep himself uh, as you can see jackson is a pretty good looking guy here he, this is a pretty beefy dude so he is in really, really, really good shape. Now, Kif, beautiful Kif, uh, was uh, kind of a court-bred student. Her parents were very popular, uh, very established in the world, and they put her through a very rigorous corporation training program. And she worked for a long time as a researcher for that same corporation until she finally said, you know what? I've not done anything with my, my 28 years of life. Okay, let's maybe, uh, here, 34. I'm 34. I haven't done anything but be the slave to the man, so she jumped on a colony ship with her lover, Jackson, and Kif decided to go out into the wide world. And so there we go. Kif, of course, has medical, social, intellectual, and really, I didn't even bump these up manually. This is all from the backstory. The, the uh, corporate researcher gets a ton of stuff. So Kif is incapable of violence and art artistry. Jackson is also incapable of artistry. He doesn't like fire either, but Bairdy is pretty much incapable of nothing. Bairdy can do it all. So Bairdy will be the one and the only. I like the little uh, the little stuff on their faces too. So, do you know what? During a colony ride, I bet our lovely... Uh, do we have a, actually have a crafter? <laughs> I don't think I have a crafter. Here we go. Um, Kif. You know, Kif was so bored on this colony ride that, that she decided to make a companion. And so she made a T1. What am I looking for specifically? We can add a, so many different units here. Let's go ahead and say, uh, we'll call it, it's, it's called a slave. It's not really a slave, but it's gonna be a tier one robot that she crafted as her own. And Kif named his good friend robot Popo after a lovely childhood pet because it's just so lovable and adorable. Now Popo, I'm kind of curious about the backstory here. Um, we're going to say that this journey, um, you know, it's all about relativity, right? So you got to, you launch your colony ship, you get it up to relativistic speed. The journey might take, you know, hey, 40 or 50 years, but it might only seem like three years for those on board. And we'll say that maybe Kif uh, has only been working with his new robot friend for about a year. Uh, let's see, 60, 50. I, I think we got to add a couple of years on here to make sense. Okay, there we go. The chronological age matches up now. They all launched from Earth. 
got up to relativistic speeds, and there we go. Now, the colony ship is unique because in our, in our little neck of the galaxy, we kind of had pods launch out all across the world to try to find and establish new colonies, and we're kind of the scouts. We're the scouts for the actual colony force that's coming behind us, so we'll have to establish our own base and uh, keep things going for a couple of years. We're making sure that everything is nice and secure. So, Popo, what kind of fun little stuff can we do for drones? You know, I think I like this here. We're, we're going to say that Kif designed Popo to be kind of a constructor, uh, both, you know, doing some construction as well as some crafting. So they're basic, they're basically there to help you out in the colony. And, you know, we'll also say that Popo's not really good yet. Popo's very new. Uh, you know, Kif had to grab whatever spare parts was around. So he really couldn't get the best of the best in terms of, of, of you know, devices. So Popo is very basic, simple-minded. I like this one. Permanent mood effect, uh, 20, social impact of negative 90. In fact, uh, there is an, another trait, and the traits also are completely changed with this collection as well. Uh, I believe the color is how rare something is. is. So think of them like kind of um, gear colors from uh, any MMO you've played. All right, so we're going to keep Popo with the simple-minded trait, because that makes sense, right? Popo is a droid. He's not going to have a complete... He's also a tier one droid. Maybe maybe the, some of the fancier models, and if Kif had the materials, he could build a really high-level android. But right now, we're going to keep it relatively simple. Now, the simple-minded, it's kind of like a neither here nor there in terms of a trait. It's a very neutral trait. So, uh, social impact of negative 90, which means he really doesn't add much to social situations, but his permanent mood effect is pretty good. We're also going to give him Industrious because he's a robot. He has a very one-track mind. He'll start to work on something, and then boom, 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 it's done. So for a negative trait, is there anything like a broken or a... Uh, okay, here's what we'll do. I'll tell you what. Instead of another trait that's bad, let's go into the health conditions and see what kind of fun stuff here. Oh my god. We can install a, um, a prosthetic animal reproductive organ on Popo. I don't know if he'd be willing to go that far yet. I love this. You can get a heat pump or a heat exchanger, a heat sink, storage, power converter. There's so much in terms of implants that we've not even ever touched before. I'm very, very excited about. Now, the only thing I don't like about the medical conditions, I don't have a tooltip to show me exactly what all this stuff is. So I'm not sure how bad this is. What if we just say he has something like a, oh, it's a severity level. Interesting. Minor one. He has a faulty coolant pump. I don't know what that's going to do because I can't even see what the negative is going to be. But, you know, if you think about it, Kif put Popo together on a colony ship, which really didn't have a lot of spare materials that were readily available. They're all stashed away. So he had to kind of build him from random parts that uh, he found during the journey. So there's going to be some weird things in Popo's design. All right, I like it. Let's, let's stick with this. Popo is just going to be... Kind of our little, our, our, our colony mascot, if you will. You know, we're going to treat him well, um, but he doesn't do a lot. He, you know, he, he tries to help when he can. He can move stuff from point A to point B. He can't do anything in intellectual, but hey, he can pick up some rocks and move it from point A to point B without any kind of an issue. Back over to our humans. Now, Bairdy coming from his background uh, of being a cave child, we're going to give him the undergrounder trait, which I believe makes him happier, uh, less grumpy about being underground, right? Never feel cooped up or get cabin fever. It makes sense. He's been a cave child and a colony settler his entire life. Now, here's another fun one that we could add. This might cause a lot of trouble, but wouldn't it make sense if Barity has lived most of his life in kind of the low lighting that you would find in a cave or the artificial lighting in, in a colony ship, it really would make sense that he's a little bit photosensitive to the, uh, the brightness of a brand new planet being under the harsh Rimworld sky. So I like having the... Uh, Photosensitive is our negative trait. And you know what? I think as someone who is, he was really dependent on for, you know, maintaining the colony, for maintaining the colony ship itself, and then his mind and stuff like that. He's probably going to be a pretty hard worker, I would think. He's going to be uh, pretty good at what he does. Okay, there we go. I've changed a little bit about Bairdy's look. I think this is a good looking Bairdy, don't you? I think so. Cave child, colony settler, undergrounder, photosensitive, hard worker, and he's going to be our constructor and our miner with a little bit of love for some plants here and there. Even though it hurts his eyes, he just can't, you know, he can't get around the fact that it's so nice in this open world to be under this open sky instead of in a tiny, tiny space. So he loves to plant and work with the greenery whenever he can. All right, so Jackson, we're going to say, you know what? 
Uh, Jackson is also a great cook, but he loves to eat. So we're going to give him the gourmand trait, uh, which is going to pump his uh, cooking through the roof. And I don't think I've even done anything. Oh, I have added a little bit. So we'll reduce that to make sure it's not crazy OP. But I mean, his background really is very heavy in cooking along with the gourmand trait. So he's going to eat a little bit more. I would call this kind of a neutral trait since it gives both a positive and a negative. Let's also say that, you know what? Jackson is a, a very happy person. He's, you know, he's a, he's got all the food. He makes food for other people. It's a happy life. You make people happy by making food and you get to, to handle plants all day and kind of enjoy the beautiful sun of the rim world. So we're going to give him the sanguine trait uh, to keep his mood at a very high level. And then also Jackson is a bit of a body purist. He really doesn't like it when people, uh, you know, go around showing off those synthetic parts and robot parts. It just, it bothers him. You know, the human body is natural and has no robot limbs, right? So he's very much a body purist. But interestingly though, Kif, who has been in the, uh, you know, the research field for so long, now she's a bit of a techno uh, freak. So she is actually really interested in replacing some of her parts with robot artificial body parts. She's made this robot, but she's like, man, I would love to transfer my consciousness into a robot. That is her end goal in life. So we're going to see how this married couple deals with the problem of a transhumanist and body purist. All right, finally, we're going to give Kiv a couple extra trades. Fast Walker, you know, you wanted to go everywhere. They're always interested in getting from point A to point B as quick as she can. So she's got Fast Walker as well as Too Smart. She really has a, a higher learning factor, but her mental break threshold is much higher too. So she's just a little bit neurotic, right? She's a little bit um, not quite there, but you know, that's what they say about genius, right? And finally, one last thing that I want to add on to Popo that I saw, which just is wonderful. Popo hates children. They're this tiny little flesh bag that keep running in front of him. They get inside of his robotic legs and trip him. He falls over and he can't even, you know, if he falls on them, he crushes them. They're so, they're so tiny and squishy. So, you know what? Screw that. We're going to say Popo hates children. And there we go. Here is our interesting mix of people here. We've got Barity, Jackson, Kiff. If you notice, look at these outfits, guys. A lovely chef's uniform on Jackson. Kiff has his medical scrubs. Barity is just old plain Barity. You know what I think we're going to do here for Popo? The reason he dislikes children? Because they always throw stuff around him. They're always messing with him. Uh, where is a... Let's go with a scarf. Yeah, see, they, they always wrap him in these strange fabrics, and it, it winds up getting in his gears and servos. So that's why he's upset for little children. They tend to dress him up like this and throw scarves around him. Uh, this was all before they left the colony ship as a whole to go kind of scout out their area. So with that being said, we have all of our stats that I believe we're going to need. Let's take a quick look. Construction and mining, planting, uh, cooking and planting, as well as all the intellectual stuff. And crafting is going to be Popo primarily. No one really big on the animals, but no one's really horrible at it either. Uh, we could have someone kind of helping to feed if we wind up doing any of that. I would love, 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 love to do a bit of uh, raising animals because we do have the birds and bees mod. So they are, I believe they're going to reproduce on their own. So I want to try to have some kind of a livestock. And with that being said, let's take a look at our starting equipment. I'm going to remove a couple things and see if it helps us with points. And in fact, it does. We're going to remove the plasteel stuff right out of the gate. That's going to free up a bunch of points. Remember I said my own limitation was staying relatively close to the point limit. So within about 2,000. So we also need... Now, one thing we have to add... Uh, oh god, not the advanced Android assembly kit. <laughs> we need to add ammunition. And I think it's under industrial. If I remember correctly. It's going to be industrial ammunition. There we go. How much would 1,000 cost us? Uh, that's not even 1,000. Not 10,000 either. Okay, this is a bit much. So I guess we're going to start out with about 200 rounds. Ooh, this is rough. 200 rounds of industrial ammo. Uh, we'll say 300. 100 for each gun. Oh, we only have one gun in the colony. Then we'll just do 100. By the way, how do we have... Uh, what's our defenses like? Okay, I'll tell you what. We're going to say that Kif added a, a, a subroutine in regards to defenses. And, and, and he kind of gave... He programmed Popo with the memories of old soldiers... So he's a little bit, he's, he's pretty good at shooting. He's okay. He's not a, a great shot because his limbs are still kind of weak and whatnot. But by and large, if, if there's enemies that are threatening his uh, flesh and blood humans, his Asimov directions uh, or directives will kick in and he will defend the colony as needed. So what else are we going to want? You know, let's get removed the pug. <laughs> as much as I love the puggles, 
Let's go into animals. I never really start with animals that I get to pick. What if we just start with a couple of cows or something like that? Do we want to just do a breeding pair of animals? And then uh, we have to keep them nice and safe and, and sound and whatnot. You guys, look at some of these freaking combinations. These are the chicken loaf, the chicken spider, the chicken rabbit. These are all the things that we can do with the DNA mod in uh, in RimWorld or in this collection. And it's kind of terrifying. I'm not going to lie. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add in a male and a female cow to our colony because, you know, they would have understood that we need to start out with some animals. Uh, we'll also go ahead and get, can we just get a normal cat? We'll get a female and a male cat to help us out with uh, some of the, you know, the rodents on uh, in the area. Because, you know, the num number one, cats are always good luck on ships. That's a tradition that came from the, uh, you know, back when Earth still had a, an ocean going Navy. They had cats on board ships for luck, and it, they do that still in space right now, too. So, we've got cats, we've got cows, we've got ammunition. I think we're doing pretty good. We, we're still within a thousand points or so of where we started out with, which makes me think we did not break the game too badly. Uh, Kip and Jackson are married. I love this start. I'm really excited. You know, honestly, just making the background story has added so much already. So, here we go. Barity, Jackson, Kip, and Popo. Uh, the Mighty Four... Uh, or I guess, how many do we have? Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Well, the mighty eight. We're so close to the mighty nine, but we're not quite there yet. Are you sure that you're finished with your customization? Yes, I am ready, my friends. I hope you're ready as well. This is going to be the, the beginning of a long journey of Rim. Oh, my God, I hope it's long. I hope we don't die within the first three episodes. Okay, here we come. We are showing up, and I want to show you a really cool mod. Uh, that is accessible here by this little dice symbol in the upper right hand corner. It's called the map reroll mod and you can configure this down in your options. Uh, and I want to show you this real quick because it's important at the start of your map. Now, it, you can, it actually will kind of, not kind of punish you, it'll try to keep a balance and cost resources if you want to keep rerolling your map. But you could reroll the map, for example, and, and kind of configure everything. And we're like, oh, you know what, this zone is way too open, I want more mountains. Then you can change this. And the cool thing is that it will give you a preview here of the newly generated or what the new uh, newly generated map would look like, which is really, really cool. But I think that as is, our map looks pretty freaking good. Nice open area here to work with, right dead center. Nice and secure on most sides uh, that we could kind of fence off. We do have a couple of animal friends. Uh, there's a bear here. There are, what else we have in the zone? We have some Auroch bulls lovely now we, we do we may find dinosaurs in our midst here in fact we have a gigantelope which is uh from the alpha animals mod which is part of the uh, genetic rim uh gigantelopes were once designed uh as bigger more powerful variants than the muffalo lovely well maybe we can uh, tame those and turn them into our noble steeds that we shall ride into battle on like our battle wargs all right so beyond that there is also a slurrypede? Whoa. Mechanoids have been known to capture prisoners, and the slurrypede is their solution to feed them in the most efficient way possible. Oh, gross. It's a modified biomechanoid capable of devouring almost anything and processing it into a homogenous organic slurry. They're never hostile, though. That is, that is crazy disgusting. Okay. That is... Oh my god, I want it as a pet, you guys. It's adorable. Look at the little eyes here. And I'm going to picture this as the mouth. And this is the only eye it's got. It's a little tiny face. Okay, we're good. We're good. Let's take a look at our surroundings and start to get uh, some of our stuff ordered uh, here. We've got also a shock goat as well. Shock goats are domesticated alien animals. Oh my god. What a crazy map. So, there's a lot of stuff on the screen, especially that's new from the collections or the Immersion Plus collection. Brace yourselves, my friend, for this is the new research tree. <laughs> oh yes, it is absolutely freaking insane. Hardcore insanity. We'll go, we'll go into this more in depth. Now, one of the things we have to keep in mind is we're starting the game with a limited amount of steel. And in order to make more steel, we have to take iron and smelt it into steel at a smelter. Or I think there's also a uh yeah the bloomery as well if we don't have any steel so we're gonna have to be a little bit careful about how much steel we're using get this thing out of the way here and what else do we got we've got uh hygiene we're gonna have to make sure that everyone stays you know uh using the bathroom where we want them to 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, the hygiene mod kind of shows us a bit more than I think we in really should use right now. Like, in theory, we'd have to research the boilers and the electric pump, but I think the mod list is kind of a little bit wonky uh, at the moment. But we do have some access to power, so we'll get power up and running, hopefully, as quick as we can. Now, the design, the layout for our new little town, I, I'm thinking of doing something like this, where we have one major thoroughfare, so to speak, through the entire town. And we, we treat it like a town where everyone's got their own little building to go into and you have, you know, little neighborhoods and stuff like that. I, I like the idea of kind of decentralizing a bit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, put down a couple of layouts. Let me build some of the, uh, the basic housing first. Okay, so there's going to be the house. We're going to have um, a nice, really big house, actually, for everyone. I want everyone to have a nice, uh, big home where their families can grow. We do, in fact, have the children mod running. So they could have children, perhaps. Uh, we also do need to put down some restrooms and whatnot. So I'll take care of that here in a bit. But we've got the uh, the houses going down first. Let's also... And there's also some new kind of um, orders here. So, for example, we could say, Hey, I want you to harvest any mature plants or any mature trees. Except there's not, actually not any uh, fully grown trees. So, oh well. Terribly sorry. We're going to have to chop down any random wood in the area. There we go. Tons of wood available for us. Let's also go ahead and just do the automated work priorities for a bit. I want everybody to be cutting, growing, constructing, and that should do it for the moment. Yeah, that's okay. We'll have everyone just doing the kind of basic labor until we get a bit more settled. I want I want the rooms up and I want the bedrooms down <laughs> faster than anything so people can have a nice place to sleep at night. Of course, Kiff and Jackson, you know, they need to uh, they need to have a little bit of private time away from everyone. They've been cooped up. In this, uh, in this starship, right? They've, they've come across the galaxy in a colony ship. And, and now they need a little time to, you know, you know re rekindle the relationship a bit. All right? So that's what we're going to give them. Uh, we're going to do that. They're going to be building their bedrooms. What else do we want to have here? We're going to have a food hall, if you will. And it is going to be a little bit bigger, probably. By the way, where do we want to have our farm at this time around? There's a lot of open space up here which is kind of easily accessible. We could kind of extend a little road going north through our, our housing district and then have some farms there. I like that one too. And uh, this area I might use for our animals. I love to get a really good set amount of animals this time around. So, and by, what I mean by that is have like a larger breeding stock. We're going to have lots of cows. I want to have lots of, you know, piglets if we have horses as well, if we want to ride horses. So I want to save some room for some kind of a ranch almost. Okay, so how else do we want to design our lovely base? So I think we're going to keep most of the, you know, industrial buildings right here, food maybe in this area, you know, things like storage, construction, technology research, different buildings. And, and I want to have them as independent buildings too. I love the idea of having like, I don't know, like technology row or something like that, or just having separate buildings where people can go to. Um, farm wise, why don't we use this space right up here? We can block off some of the areas here. Lots of open area for, for farming. And this area might be used if we can block off some of the other things. We, what in the world are you? You are some kind of a mushroom. You're a wild pod that's adapted to life outside of swamps and rainforests. Lovely, absolutely terrifying creatures here. But yeah, this all could be used as kind of a, a reserve for our uh, our budding animals. You know, we can, we're gonna have a good amount of, of breeding livestock, I think, which would be kind of fun. All right, so what are you guys up to? Kiff, Jackson, Verity and Popo. Look at you guys go. And by the way, Popo will work all day and all night. He does not need to sleep. He does need to pee, I, I guess, somehow. Maybe they've got... You need to eat, actually, as well? Uh, 0.8 maximum nutrition. Interesting. What do we normally have? One. So you're a little bit... You need a little bit less food than humans, or maybe you can store a little bit less food. That's also a new level up thing, by the way. You'll see a little cool icon when somebody levels up. And they can do this through chatting or through actual, you know, oh, right there. They were talking about hunting. And I think Jackson learned a little something about shooting from Popo, which is kind of adorable if you think about it. Let's also put down some growing zones out here in that case. In fact, let me extend my my little road that's going to go between our, our houses just to, to keep in mind like a center point. There we go. Cool. What do we want to grow? We got our farms down in place. Jackson's already starting to clear stuff off. Let's do this. Let's do um, a little bit of wheat. We'll keep our potatoes. That always seems to be a standby. Uh, we'll also do cotton for clothing. And we're also going to start our hops. Because you know what? What is a colony 
without its own source of alcohol. We would be sad, lonely creatures without beer. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. We'll deconstruct some things that are in the way. I'm digging it. This is already starting to look pretty cool. I'm, I'm liking this a lot. Uh, we can put some down to some defenses. I'm a little concerned about wild animals. Because with the birds and bees mod, they will reproduce. And I have seen massive packs of animals in the wild. So let's put down some defenses a little earlier than I normally would. We're going we're gonna to kind of wall off some areas here and there. Wall this off. And we'll, then we'll deal with whatever's left. Like there's a lynx there. There's a couple of bears here and there. Uh, there's some apparently alive, creepy looking um, mushroomy things. So we'll get those taken care of. And I think one more spot right over here we'll, we're going to wall off as well. No, not steel. Just wood. Just wood. Thank you. And then what we'll do is we'll put a couple doors in case our people need to go out. And I will get some kind of a centralized defensive position at some point in the future. But I, I think early on, I really want to be careful. We have so many animals that we need to keep safe. Uh, we, we, we don't want them to be attacked. And there's like a lynx here and there. There's a bear here and there. I want to be really careful in case they decide to come hunting uh, for food. All right, so for food, let's put down kind of a meeting hall, like a longhouse here. It'll be dead center of the road away from uh, over to the farms. And we're going to have, we'll just split this up. We'll have like a uh, frozen place here where our freezer is frozen place, <laughs> also known as a freezer. Uh, kind of a five wide, maybe. Five wide room for the kitchen, plenty of space kind of along the wall. We'll probably put the wall refrigerators in, number one, because I love the wall refrigerators most uh, more than many things in life here. We'll do this instead. There we go. A pretty big space for cooking, a big space for dining, and a little room for freezer uh, to, to freeze our food and stuff like that. So I am excited about that. Let's do um, door in the center, door right here, doors here, there. Lovely. I'm digging it. All right, cool. We are set with that. We also want to go ahead and start putting down some of our power early on. So let's throw down our one of our wind turbines. And normally we put those right at the edge of our farm. And in order to get this working, I'm going to have to mine out just a little sliver of rock. And also to cut down probably anything in the way. So cut all this stuff down. I'll also... Oh, we, we, we don't have any uh, batteries yet. So we are going to have to look into the research tree. And let's find... Some batteries in here, wherever the batteries might be. Kiff, my friend. You brainiac, you. Go make batteries. Beautiful. So he'll work on batteries. We need to give him a place to work and actually do his research. So let's go ahead and put down uh, another building here, which will be kind of like a little research room. We'll say that this is the research hub. You know, I kind of want to have them not the same size as well. We'll make it a little bit different sized buildings. And this will kind of be like a, a separate road. So we'll have some more stuff over here too. Oh, like it. Love it, love it, love it. Orders, allow, unforbid all items, lovely. What do you think, you guys? You guys uh, like this so far? Kiff? Barity, Jackson, you guys happy with your newfound area? I think Popo is. Popo is really excited. Look, he looks so dapper in his little scarf here. Looking really good. As is often the case in RimWorld, we're going to have a, a little bit of time where the early game construction is happening. God, I'm really nervous about this Lynx, though. Okay, how how can we take care of this? Now, Jackson. Ooh, Jackson was our melee guy. We do have a knife here, so Jackson grabbed the knife. Popo grabbed the rifle. Uh, hopefully, we still have. Uh oh, where did? <gasps> Are we missing ammunition? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's right. It was right above me. Oh my gosh, I freaked out for a second. I thought we didn't have our ammo. So we have at least a hundred rounds of ammunition. This has to last us until we get over to, I think, in the research tree, it's going to be under machining and then uh, gun gunsmithing, I think. Gunsmithing is where we're going to be able to actually make the, uh, the ammunition for the weapon. So that's going to be a bit down the road. Where did it actually go under? Uh, blowback operation should be somewhere under here, right? Machining, here it is, machining and then gunsmithing. And gunsmithing, if you take a look right there, there's the recipe for industrial ammo. So we're pretty much going to rush, <laughs> as my voice cracks in my excitement, we're going to rush down to the, uh, the 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 ability to make ammunition, because that's going to be obviously a big point. If we can't defend ourselves, we're kind of screwed. So for the moment, we'll keep it how it is. Now, I don't like all these, these predators hanging around. 
These are not my my favorite little uh, my favorite little friends in the neighborhood. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's make a new animal zone. Oh, there's a school area too. That I forgot that we got the school mod enabled. Oh, lovely! I, I can't wait to start looking at um, some of the the child you know kind of stuff there when we're having uh, kids are growing up and things like that. Oh, that is configurable by the way. Everything mod wise is always configurable. Uh, but specifically, I believe it is baby and children. So there's like a a rate of growth. There's an accelerated weight. Uh, sorry, there's an accelerated growth factor for kids. And then children, school, and learning, you can kind of specify what age do you want the kids to pop out at. So we can start them out at 10, uh, 12, whatever you want. So just for fun, we're going to experiment with that and see what kind of a balance we want. All right, let's create a new area for our animals. We'll call this the animal zone. And then we shall expand the said animal zone right over here. This is going to be just temporary grazing until we kind of get everything lined up. And I'm going to assign my lovely cows over to the animal zone. There we go. The cows can do that. The cats can just hang out. Uh, let's keep them relatively safe in the... You know what? Let's keep them in the animal zone for now. We'll let them roam free once the, all the threats have been eliminated. And Popo, sweet Popo, can we send you on a hunt? An early game hunt. There's a lynx right here. The problem is... If it goes crazy, it might attack Barity. Let's move Barity out of the way. Let's go ahead and just preemptively move Barity. Let's see if we can get a nice sneak attack on this Lynx right here. Okay, that was a miss. The Lynx is like, the shit? Someone's shooting at me? What the hell's going on here? Popo, buddy, you're really letting us down. Is it because it's nighttime? Oh, wow, never mind. That was a neck shot. Oh, that's savage. Popo, you savage, savage robotic bastard. Well done. Well struck, sir. Okay, so we have one Lynx that's going to go down. We'll mark that bad boy onto the butchering tab. And while I'm thinking about butchering, let's also put down our... Hello, hello. Not the electric butcher. The manual butcher. There we go. We'll put that down here. And uh, we'll also put down a zone temporarily for dumping all of the animal carcasses. Clear everything. We want to have only corpses here. Only the freshest of corpses shall be allowed. What the hell was that sound? Is somebody, uh, are there animals fighting each other? It's like a very unpleasant moan. <laughs> I don't know if they're fighting or what's go. Oh, that was the, um, I think that was the, yeah, that was the, uh, lynx being executed by Popo. Ah, Popo, you are a savage, my friend. Okay, so one enemy is down, so to speak, one predator. That could hunt our friends. Now, there's a bear over here as well. How aggressive do we want to be in clearing this all out? I think maybe let's clear out anything that gets really, really close. And then, you know, once we build our walls here, build a wall. And we'll go ahead and work on our, you know, clearing out the internal area once everything has been secured. Okay? Kif, meanwhile, is super grumpy about life. You're in intense pain. Oh, God. You managed to get food poisoning within a second of getting here. <laughs> So you are not... Up oh, no. Kif has become apathetic and is less likely to do her assigned work. You are ravenously hungry because you're puking up everywhere. Well, Kif's going to have a, a, like a kind of a, a bit of a fit. That's fine. Kif can go wander around. Look, is it because you've not had any loving with Jackson? I understand. You guys don't have a private bed yet. We'll, we'll fix this up today. We'll make sure by the end of the day, you two will have some privacy. You can get doing whatever you want to do, my friends. We are not going to get in your way anymore. Let's add in a couple of things here. We want to do our research room production, and we'll do um, the research bench as well. It's one of my favorite things in the game, the manager desk, because it's honestly just flipping really useful. Let's stick that like that. It's like a big giant thing of uh, Tetris. Got to get it all organized. I'll, I'll worry about chairs and stuff later. I want to be a little careful about how much you know, material we're spending off, uh, kind of up early on. There's our first wind turbine, of course, blocked by the crap ton of trees in the area. We'll get there. There's a lot of stuff to be constructed. So I know a lot of people are working on stuff. We're cutting down trees. Um, you know, in fact, let's work on the specialties here. So everyone's going to be patienting, doctoring. Actually, Popo, since he is a robot or since he's an android, he doesn't really need to worry about recovery as much. Because he's not really in any kind of pain. I don't even know what maintain vat or the hack is. We're going to take that away for a moment. Uh, we'll do patient, and but not bed rest for Popo. Popo's just going to work through the pain. All right, so Kif, our researcher here, you're going to be handling any kind of entertainment. 
when you're not entertaining, you're going to be managing and then researching. Ooh, teaching and studying are new skills. I believe that are related to children. So we'll have to, again, we'll, we'll come revisit a lot of this stuff once we actually manage to have kids in the colony itself. Um, right, so Kif is pretty much taken care of. Popo, you, primarily, I would love for you to pretty much just build stuff. Uh, let's see, hunt when you want, build stuff otherwise, and then pretty much help out everywhere else. We're going to put fours across the board. Uh, let's have you maybe haul and clean before you help do everything else, because you're kind of like a little bit of a cleaning bot, right? You're, you're going to help out around the house, <laughs> so to speak. It's okay, we still love you. You're all set, Jackson, my friend. You, of course, are the primary cook, although I want you to always be plant cutting and growing whenever you can. Uh, no research for you, my friend. No teaching and gardening just yet either. And then, Barity, you... What are you doing, Barity? Oh, you're the crafter. So you're primarily the constructor, uh, and then you're going to help out with growing and then mining. That sounds good. Because mining is not really an, a vital, vital, you know, you must do this now kind of a task. So there we are. There is our current list of items, uh, kind of list of priorities, and we'll help, uh, we'll adjust that as we go. Also, you know what, Jackson? I don't think we quite need as many trees as I originally said to cut down. So why don't we kind of um, clean up some of my tree cutting orders so that you're not out here forever just cutting down every single tree known to man. There we go. You'll you'll cut up any trees that are in the, uh, kind of in the way of your, of your uh, planting zone. And that's all we really want. I would like to get these walls up, though, as soon as we can. But I understand that, you know, we kind of have to do a lot of things at one time. Oh, by the way, for some reason, I don't know which mod does this, but in this collection, you'll notice that when you build a, a room, the, the build roof does not instantly occur. You will have to tell them to specifically build a roof inside of your building. And it's complaining because there's trees in the way, which is fine. I don't know where auto roofing comes into play. Is it, um... I really don't want to spend too much time in the mod settings, but is it like auto roof or something like that? Is there like a roof? Roads of Rim. Not quite. All right, nothing about roof. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. I don't even know. You know, I would say like 50% of the mods in here right now. There's so many mods that do tiny little things and that hopefully don't, you know, the, the nice thing is that this collection has been curated so that in theory, these mods don't collide and fight with each other, which is really, really cool. A big huge thanks to Necros, by the way, N-E-C-E-R-O-S. This is the creator of the Immersion Plus uh, collection pack here. So thank you so much for putting this together and curating it. It is a lovely, lovely, awesome. Oh my God, it's so adorable. Uh, lovely mod. What are those? Meadow Ave. Is Ave the race? Is Meadow something different? Uh, a large flightless bird with colorful feathers. Many uh, mostly found in the plains eating fruits and berries. Naturally attract the eyes and hands of those who wander by. Underneath those majestic feathery coat, it's a wild animal with razor sharp beak and a claws and the claws to match. Okay, well, not going to piss you off. I'd love to ride these guys into battle, though. You could distract your enemies with like a flourish of your glorious uh, feathers and whatnot. More chunks of spacecraft. Yes, please. Uh, spacecrafts will give you not only components, but also steel, straight up steel, which is super useful as well, because again, we do have to smelt our steel down right now which is going to take a long time. Poor Jackson, I don't know why. Hang on, are they guys, did you guys have a breakup or something? <gasps> oh no, what happened here? Hang on a minute. Um, Kiff and Jackson are not married. Well, shoot, I thought I had them set to marriage. Maybe I screwed it up somehow. <laughs> oh no. Well, that means that Jackson needs to get a bed as well. Okay, there, there are some spare beds here. I guess... <laughs> I guess our sweet Kiff and Jackson and hey, Birdie now, uh, Birdie as well is now kind of uh, into the mix, right? They're they're all in this lovely relationship pot. So we're going to have to see who comes out on top, who loves whom. Maybe it'll be Kiff and Jackson. Maybe it'll be Birdie and Jackson. Maybe it'll be Birdie and Popo. Who's to say? All right, we're going to set um, this other links here to hunt. So Popo should take care of that relatively soon. I want that links taken care of as well as there is a... Uh, where'd that bear go? I thought there was a bear a little bit closer to town. Oh, there is. It's right here. Oh, God. Uh, this goat ewe is getting completely shredded by this bear. So we are going to, in fact, try to hunt yon bear because I honestly don't want them chasing down our kitties or our lovely cows before we are ready, right? We want to make sure that our, our, our animals are nice and protected. Um, Cassie, 
And why are you both female? <laughs> How did that get screwed up somewhere along the line? At least our cats are not, but, um... Okay, well, somewhere along the line I screwed that up. Either that or the mods really didn't like uh, maybe changing the map. That could have been what happened or when I was messing around with the map settings. But it looks like we have two females. So no matter how hard they try, I don't believe we're going to have any kind of cow reproduction for a little bit. That's okay, though. We can still I think you can still milk them, actually. Um, by the way, the little green fleck you saw was the mod about friendly fire. You can't actually shoot... If, uh, shoot a target if there is a friendly pawn between you and your target. So you'll see, like, a, a green light and a blue name. Not a green light, sorry, green text and blue text indicating that someone is being blocked from shooting, which is kind of cool, to be honest. This I love that this this lynx is, is straight up outfoxing Popo right now. It's bleeding all over the place. It's going to bleed to death in four hours. Honestly, Popo, why don't you just... Oh, oh, boy. Oh, Popo. Let's not go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the lynx, shall we? I don't really know how, um, how ninja issue are. There we go. It decided to bleed out and pretty much collapse. So we're going to kill that. Finish hunting the lynx. Lovely job, Popo. You know, I think Popo is going to become a, uh, a very important figure in our community. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to be the one to protect us. Uh, he's going to keep us nice and safe. Popo hunting down the bear. Let's go ahead and uh, send away the visitors for the moment. We don't really have any spare beds. Oh, God. Oh, God. Run, Jackson. Run. Uh, that bear is on your ass. Now, thankfully, maybe? Is Jackson quick? He is right now. <laughs> he is when there's a bear chasing him. Let's get Jackson to move. He does have a knife, but I really don't want to test that out. Okay, Popo is tr gonna try to help out and defend Jackson. Jackson, why don't you kite the bear back over to Popo? Bear to get out of the way. Popo getting some really good shots in right now. Come on, Popo. You got this, buddy. There was the, the little coloration there to indicate that the, some folks are in the way. Jackson, why don't you come on? You are really fast right now. Je Jackson is booking it, you guys. Does he have a fear? Oh, he does! What is this? You get an adrenaline rush. Does everyone get, um, adrenaline here? <laughs> Intense, I would, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. You get, you start seeing a bear coming to chase you down. I think you would get an adrenaline rush as well. Uh, the bear is gonna die in four hours. It's down to about half of its health. Let's keep dragging it away. We do have the running gun mod on. That's why Popo is able to kind of look back behind him and take the shot. Come on, you bastard. Slow down. Three hours from now, it's going to die. But if it gets to Popo, we're going to be in trouble. Can you just stop running and gunning and just run? Just run less gunning? Oh, God, Popo. Popo is not really fast, you guys. This bear is on his ass. Okay. I believe we're getting a little bit of separation here. Let's take him away from our animals. We have to kite him for just a little bit longer. He's going to bleed out here in just a... Oh, there he goes. And he went down. Whew. Good job, Popo. You saved Jackson's life. Well, to be fair, you kind of started it. But still, you saved his life. All right. Well, there we go, guys. Well done. We've killed a bear. We've uh, we've killed a couple of lynxes right now. We're doing pretty good. Who's our constructor? Is it Beardy? Good Beardy, sir. Could I... Oh, no. Beardy has contracted diarrhea. From dirty water or not washing their hands. Oh, crap. I forgot all about the uh, sanitation system. Let's work on the butchering table. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and set up some of our basic hygiene. So we're going to set down... I'm also... I'm shifting this building over to tiles because I forgot. I wanted to add a bathroom on the back of everyone's house. So everyone's going to have their own... Uh, their own little kind of private latrine. And we'll talk more about the, uh, hy the hygiene system here in a little bit. But it is really cool. Because you also can put in something like, say, uh, where did it go to? It went to a stall door here, which which kind of prevents anyone from looking at you and then you getting embarrassed about the fact that, well, you're pooping in front of the entire group. Let's also grab a primitive well so we can have some uh, well water here. We'll put this right in front of our kitchen. And we'll also put down, a, uh, let's put it down a tub in a couple, we'll put one down a tub in everyone's room. But more than likely, we're only going to have uh, one tub built e early on. But let's get a well going so we can at least try to have some form of uh, of cleanliness here. Who has who has the uh, the shits here? Oh god, poor Barity. That's a rough life, man. Where are you going, buddy? You're hauling wood to the wall. Can we actually change that over to? Hello. Why doth thou? Why are you refusing to build my well? Are you grumpy at me? Is it because your diarrhea is taking over your mind? Oh, you already had the, the order queued up. 
is what that was. Okay, so you're going to finish the well, which indeed should take a hot minute or two. And once we get the well done, we'll also do... I'm going to force you to do a uh, at least one of our tubs. There you go. Go ahead and clean yourself up. It's, I feel really bad about the fact that he uh, contracted diarrhea. Recre oh, we also don't have any recreation uh, set up yet. I always forget in the newer... You know, whenever I open a new game, I always forget to add recreational items. There's also a D&D &D table, by the way, which I'm extremely, extremely happy about. We'll put the D&D &D table back here in the dining hall. I don't care that it's 50 wood. It's worth it to me, okay? I know my priorities here, guys. <laughs> you should, too. Um, you can put a, sh a small little schmoll, a schmoll table here. We'll put down a couple of chairs so people can eat their food against the wall and stare at nothingness. All right, well, that was pretty much the first evening of our first day, right? Is it now, uh, it should be day two, I think. Oh, hey, we, here we go. Since it looks like you'll be here for a while, Popo thinks that you should give your faction a name. You know what? You know what I like? What comes to mind right away? Popo, since Popo is the one that's suggesting we do this, why don't we call ourselves the Bear Killers? Because Popo is the one that took down the bear single-handedly with excellent skill and precision. And, um, you know, I was actually looking through, like, the old Dwarf Fortress name generator, and I kind of like that style of name, like uh, Boat Murdered, except not Boat Murdered, I, I, I randomed one up, Anvil Boat, there we go, our new town is going to be called Anvil Boat. All right, my friends, you know, I think this is a great point to put a cut he in here at the first uh, end of our first episode. Our travelers have come from far and away. Some of us were chefs, some of us were corporate drones, others were... Uh, you know, simply in a cave somewhere working for their clan. But no, we're all here to try to forge a new home for humanity. And I'm very excited to be here with you, Kif, Jackson, Barity, and Popo, all together as the Bear Killer Clan. I want to thank you so much for stopping by to watch this first video. Hey, by the way, I know people always joke about the whole like and subscribe thing. Uh, liking a video actually does increase the video's results on the search page. So having a like, even at, just adding a comment, it's really, really helpful in terms of the YouTube algorithm. So I would really appreciate it. It helps kind of get visibility to the series. If you could just, you know, say something, tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see. Um, if you want to see a certain mod, or if you want me to click on something like drug response, let me know. And I will do that if you uh, comment in the video below. Otherwise, guys, thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. And uh, be sure to, if you want to check us out on Discord and come chat with us, we have our own Discord. Hi, puppy. We have a Discord that you can come hang out in. And if you'd like to support this type of content creation, I also have a Patreon, which you can uh, donate to if you'd like. And as a thank you to anyone who donates, um, kind of my way of saying thank you to help sustain the channel is that's how I name characters in the game. So uh, Kif, Popo, Berdy, and Jackson are all people who've supported the channel or supported me through Twitch or Patreon. So I want to say thank you guys so much. And I really want to say thank you to everyone else who has given me a ton of support over the last few months. It's almost, it's, it's almost been one exact year since we've started this channel. So I'm really excited, guys. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode.